Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mephisto and our journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the opening round of the 1963 season, the Monaco Grand Prix. But before we begin, as always, I would like to thank everyone who's been following this channel. You guys are awesome. Obviously, every view, like and subscriber I get is very helpful and will ultimately lead to the channel being more visible in YouTube's messed up algorithm. I would also like to thank everyone who took part in the straw poll, which is a way for you guys to interact with this series by choosing which teams Andy is driving for in a given season. Speaking of which, let's have a look at the poll results. There were a total of 53 votes sent in, which is around one fifth of all of my subscribers aka not many people. Anyway, let's look at a breakdown of the poll results. Tim Parnell Racing Limited and Sifford Racing Team haven't received a single vote. Ecuri Marsbergen, Shiroko Powell Racing, British Racing Partnership and Rec Parnell Racing each received one vote. RRC Walker Racing Team received two votes. Cooper Car Company received three votes. Brabham Racing Organization received four votes. Automobili Turismo Esport and Owen Racing Organization received five votes, making them the third most popular choice. Ferrari received 11 and so were the second most popular team but the winners were Team Lotus with 19 votes so Andy will be once again driving for this team and hopefully things will go a little bit better this season than they did the last one. Now before I move on to talking about the 1963 season there are a few things I'd like to bring up. Something related to the cars in this season. First off these cars are very difficult to control. For some reason they always feel like you're driving on ice. It is very easy to spin these cars even with traction control and stability assist turned on. Which means it is going to be a right pain to drive this season. 2. These cars feel like they are made of feathers. The slightest touch with another car or a wall and you are sent flying in the other direction. And finally, the brakes on these cars seem to be more of a decoration than actual brakes. What I mean by that is... If you want to slow down for a corner, especially one that's situated at the end of a very long straightaway, you need to start braking last year in order for the car to slow down enough for you to easily make the corner. All three of these factors combined is, are going to make this season very interesting. And before you say, well, just switch to another car, they all behave like this. In fact, Lotus is probably the easiest to control out of all of these. So that's going to be very very interesting. Anyway with that out of the way, let's have a quick look at what happened during the 1963 Formula 1 season. It was held between the 30th of March and the 28th of December. It was comprised of 24 races, 10 of them were part of the world championship, whilst the other 14 were non-championship races. The driver's title went to Jim Clark who won 7 of the 10 races and scored a total of 54 points or 73 if we are to consider the drops points. Graham Hill and the season in second winning two of the remaining three races and scoring 29 points. And Richie Genther finished the season in third. His best finish of the season were a couple of second place finishes. He also scored 29 points or 34 with the drop points. However, since Graham Hill performed better overall during the season, Ginther only finished third. The Constructors Championship was won by Lotus Climax. They scored 54 points or 74 if we are to consider the drop points. All of this was done over seven victories during during the course of the season. BRM finished the season in second with 36 points or 45 with the drop points. They won two of the remaining three races. And the third place went to Brabham Climax with 28 points or 30 with the drop points. They haven't won a single race this season. A notable thing about the 1963 season is the fact that despite a few injuries there were no fatalities. A pretty unusual occurrence for the time. I don't know about you guys but I'm rather happy that I don't have to report any deaths. Anyway, let's move on to the opening round of the season, the Monaco Grand Prix. It was held on the 26th of May, it had 25 entries, 15 of them took part in the race with 6 of them ending up retiring. The race consisted of 100 laps completed in 2 hours, 41 minutes and 50 seconds. Jim Clark started the race from pole with Graham Hill in 2nd, Surtees 3rd, Ginther 4th, Ireland 5th and Dan Gurney started from 6th. After a superb drive, Graham Hill won the Monaco Grand Prix from Ginther who finished 4.6 seconds after Graham. Graham. Bruce McLaren crossed the line in 3rd, he was 12.8 seconds behind. Surtees finished 4th, he was 14.1 seconds behind. Tony Max ended the race in 5th, he was 2 laps down. And Trevor Taylor took 6th, he was also 2 laps down. Surtees posted the fastest time of the race, a 1 minute 34.5 second lap. 
Welcome to the start of the 1963 season here at a slightly revised Monaco. Nothing major, the only thing that's been changed is the position of the start finish straight, which means that now turn 1 is Sun Devote a fast right hander. Be very careful as the barriers are very close to the track, as we now wind ourselves up the hill into Massanet, a medium speed left hander, that feeds directly into Casino, a slightly slower right hander. We now make our way down the hill into Mirabeau, a slow right hander, after which we continue to descend into Station Hairpin. One of the slowest corners in Formula 1. From here we move on into Portier, a slow right hander that takes us through the tunnel, a unique feature of this track. We then come through Port Chicane, the slightest lapse in concentration here and you'll find yourself in the bay. Next is Tabak, a medium speed left hander that brings us onto the old start finish straight. Lastly, we make our way through Gazometer, a tight right hand hairpin. This brings us around onto the new main straight and that is a lap around the revised Monaco street circuit. And here we are in qualifying coming up on a very slowly moving Ferrari and in fact all cars were moving very very slowly in qualifying here in Monaco. I don't really understand why but upon seeing this I decided that I, it would be better not to qualify because well I would have been at a huge advantage. But anyway here are the previous Monaco Grand Prix winners. The last time we managed to win a race here was in 1960. Hopefully things will go a little bit better here well they're not but we'll talk about that a little bit later anyway Clark starts from pole with Graham Hill in second Richie Ginther third Ludovico Scarfiotti starting from fourth John Sturt is fifth and Joe Bonnier rounding off the top six Tony September is seventh eighth is Karel Godin de, de Karel Godin de Beaufort there we go ninth is Gerhard Metter Ireland 10th Tony Max 11th Lorenzo Bandini 12th, 13th is Jim Hall, followed by Jack Brabham in 14th, 15th Bruce McLaren, Dan Gurney 16th, 17th Joe Siffert, Hap Sharp is 18th, 19th is Chris Amon, Phil Hill 20th, 21st is Giancarlo Baghetti, followed by tw Trintinha in 22nd, Mason Gregory 23rd and Andy Higgs who hasn't qualified in 24th and as you can see most of all of the AI AI's uh, qualifying times were well over three minutes so that's one that's the reason I didn't want to qualify I would have gone around around the track much much faster and we are off for what's going to be a very disappointing race I can tell you already um, well to put it simply, this is going to be a repeat of what we've seen in the 50s, only even worse. <laughs> How how's that? Well, you are going you are about to find out very very soon. I'm not going to spoil it all all in just two sentences, but this isn't going to be a very good race for anyone involved. And I do mean anyone as we come up the hill therefore in towards Massanet and now we have a look at a replay of the start very slow start everyone is very very slow uh, and as I said at the beginning of uh, the uh, video these cars are very very tricky to control I don't quite understand why uh, but well, I, uh, some, something tells me that the physics aren't quite right but anyway here is a replay of Joe Siffert losing control of his car spinning around he then tries to straighten up, straighten up, but uh, ends up uh, hitting the barrier there and gets stuck. So that's his and uh, uh, race over. This is Hap Sharp or Hell Sharp uh, coming around in, through Mirabeau, hits, gets stuck, and that's the end of his race. Now we see Gerhard Mitter in the. Ecuri Marsberg and Porsche, he does the same and he's out of the race as well. Tony Mags coming through Mirabeau as well, doing the same thing, getting stuck and he is out of the Monaco Grand Prix. Then we see Ludovico Scarfiotti who seems very happy about himself for some reason. He comes through Mirabeau, gets, hits uh, Mags, gets stuck and he is out of the race. Then we see Jim Clark losing control of his Ferrari and flying into the bay, something we haven't seen in quite a while now. As we now come around to start lap 2 and we are already up in 7th place as I struggle to keep the car on the road in a straight line. Not very 
good at it at the moment, still trying to figure out how the car behaves. Here is uh, Maris Tignan apparently with a uh, gearbox problem coming into the pits to retire. Then we see Dan Gurney uh, turning in very uh, early into the final corner and then gets stuck on that wall. So he is out. Then we have John Sturtis who also has a problems with his gear uh, gearbox and decides that it would be an interesting thing to see if he could drive through the barrier. Obviously it didn't really work out for him. This is Graham Hill coming through the final corner and getting stuck on the wall. We are now looking at Lorenzo Bandini who is coming up into Massanet, uh, loses control of his car, hits the wall, loses his front left and he is out of the Monaco Grand Prix. Then we see Chris Amon trying to pull into the pits. However, half of his car is still on the track. Tony September then tries to turn in early through the corner, not quite sure why, and then ends up at the side of the road. We now see a replay of Mastin Gregory kind of doing pretty much the same as everyone else. So uh, he is out, obviously. We also have Giancarlo Baghetti apparently having problems with his gear box, but well, the ultimate thing is he retired as well. Then we have Ireland who also comes around, gets stuck on this wall like everyone else and he is out. Uh, Karel Godin de Buford does pretty much the same thing as we now come around to start lap 3 and we move up into second position. Joe Bonnier leading the race at this point. Obvious, maybe we'll catch him, maybe not. Here we see Hap Sharp turning into the final corner very early as pretty much everyone else and then driving into this wall and then retiring from the race. Jack Brabham does the same, although he also has a problem with his gearbox, so he probably would have retired anyway. Then we see Ginther doing the exact same thing, thing as anyone, everyone else, although he does make it around the corner, but decides to uh, go into the pits anyway. Here we see Phil Hill driving into the pits, apparently with a suspension problem, and we move on further along. This is Bruce McLaren, who has problems with his brakes, crashes through Tabak there and ends, well, ends, returns from the race. As we now come around to start lap 4 and we are still in second place, slowly catching up to Joe Bonnier. Maybe we are going to catch him before the end of the race. As we now move on to lap 8, coming into uh, the uh, station hairpin here, I move on the outside and get around him that way, so we are now in the lead of the uh, Monaco Grand Prix. Then coming around to finish lap 11, I post the fastest time of the race, so uh, that's pretty good for Higgs. Uh, and that's the best he'll do. As we now move on to lap 15, I hit the barrier there on the right, uh, which spins my car instantly. I, I managed to save it, however, as soon as I try to uh, speed away, my engine dies. So that's the end of the race for Andy Higgs. And here is a replay. I touch the uh, arm code there slightly, which spins the car spins the car around. I try to speed away once again because, well, I thought I could, but apparently I couldn't because my engine stalled. And that's the end of the race for Andy Higgs. And here we see. Joe Bonnier losing his brakes coming through uh, the chicane there, the port chicane, and ends up in the uh, bay. And that is the end of the race. No one actually finished the race, as you can probably see. And here are the retirements. Every single person in the who took part in the race, 24 of them, re retired from the race just... Uh, very very early which is quite a new thing for us and I could have just restarted the race but I thought it would be much more interesting to kind of end it there and I'll leave it at that obviously this is not going to 
have a huge impact on the championship overall but anyway here are the career statistics and this was Andy's 112th Grand Prix his best start is from first has 8 pole positions has set 17 fastest laps his best finishes in first has completed 73 races 57 of them in the points has won 35 Grand Prix 4 at the Indianapolis 500 6 in Monaco has 7 championships under his belt has scored a total of 388 points has retired 39 times has experienced 2437 out of 3038 laps has 6 bronze trophies 9 silver trophies 35 gold trophies and as an extension 35 podiums and here is a quick look at the championship standings obviously no one scored any points since no one completed 90% of race distance and again I could have restarted the entire thing but judging by the overall results what would have happened is well what tended to happen during the 50s Andy Higgs being the only one finishing the race and I didn't really want that so instead I chose to not restart the race and accept the results as they were so this is the first ever race in this series that isn't actually completed anyway let's move on to the constructors obviously nothing special here either no points for the teams either because well you saw what happened in the race so yeah that's a very very disappointing start to the season not not what i expected from this but oh uh, well not much to do about this now again i could have restarted the race but i was very sure that even if i would would have done that what would have ended up happening as everyone retiring except Andy Higgs who would win the Monaco Grand Prix and well would have put, given him an unfair advantage or at least so I'm told but anyway that is the end of the Monaco Grand Prix disappointing hopefully things will go a little bit better in the next race which is the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa Francorchamps looking forward to it and that's one of my favorite circuits of all time so again hopefully things will go a little bit better but that is the end of this video not much to add to that really uh, you saw what happened I'm really speechless about the entire thing but hey there you go so uh yeah that is it you can already start to vote for next season's team link to the straw poll will be in the description i also have a second channel where i will be playing all sorts of different games at the moment i'm doing a playthrough of diablo 2 and homefront so if you're interested in any of those two games there will be a link in the description to that as well i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you all so much for watching and as always stay sharp <laughs>